So next slide. Um, when we did, when we started this uh, project, uh, what is lacking in the Department of Energy is a development plan. So here comes a need for uh, basically uh, uh, an alternative fuel source, uh, an imported one. Uh, but basically we uh, do not have a, a, a categorical plan uh, that is written and visible to anyone who is interested to uh, find uh, uh, information regarding the, the need for natural gas of the Philippines. So we came out with an initial study of the investor's guide uh, in the page one, but uh, ultimately we we tried to uh, consolidate uh, all the outputs of the study into what we call now the, the downstream natural gas development plan, uh, which includes, of course, annexed to it are the specific studies as mentioned earlier by uh, Mom, uh, by Dean Rizalenda, um, by Dean De Leon. Now, next slide. So, um, this is the situation in the Philippines. Uh, power generation continues to be the main application for natural gas at 98.8%. Basically, because of the feature of the Malampaya gas to power project, it, uh, it is um, um, transported by a, a pipeline and uh, hence uh, more or less a point-to-point -to -point, uh, consumption uh, is uh, uh, practiced or was utilized for the Malampaya gas. So, uh, Power projects uh, were started way back, uh, uh, more or less the same time that uh, we have this uh, Malapaya gas discovery and production. Now, out of the total primary energy supply in 2020, 5.8% uh, of which is actually the natural gas. Uh, but where did that 5.8% uh, 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 went? It actually went almost all to the power sector. And uh, these are the plants that are uh, using them. Uh, Ilihan, Santa Rita, San Gabriel, Avion, and San Lorenzo, San Lorenzo with a combined installed capacity of uh, around 3,400 megawatt. Now, as to the power uh, share, that would be around 19% of the uh, total country uh, power requirement, but 20% uh, to, as to the Luzon grid. So basically, it's it's really on the Luzon grid. So it's 27 percent. This is not a simple uh, percentage. It, it actually eats up almost one third of the uh, Luzon grid requirement for power. Now, next slide. Uh, on the projection of the Philippine Energy Plan, um, if we use the business as usual scenario. Uh, natural gas is poised to take over coal uh, for power generation by 2040, uh, increasing it to around 40%. So we have 19% now going for 40% of the share. So market-wise, there's a market for natural gas as designed in the Philippine Energy Plan. For the clean energy scenario, of course, it, uh, uh, it went uh, a much lower percentage, but still taking in around one fourth of the share at around 26.6%. So, well, you would imagine of the, the, the natural gas of around 146 uh, terawatts per hour would be equivalent to around 20,000 megawatt of power capacity, right? So, uh, this would need around probably um, 10,000 MPPA of gas. So <laughs> that's how big uh, the requirement would be uh, for the Philippines. Now, in the next slide, so way back 2018, we, we now see the need for investors to come in, but investors are basically hesitant at the time to come in without a very clear guideline on natural gas projects, evaluation, and implementation. So we end up uh, uh, promulgating uh, a department circular uh, in lieu uh, 
uh, we do not have yet uh, a natural gas law, but uh, we still have this uh, stopgap measure for the meantime. We have a department circular. And that uh, provided for the uh, Philippine Council Natural Gas Regulations aims to ensure it's like energy security beyond uh, Malampaya's ability to fuel the existing gas power, power plants, which are due to expire, contracts are due to expire by around 2024. Now, simply put, uh, it actually provided uh, regulation as to the siting, design, construction, expansion, rehabilitation, modification, operation, and maintenance of the uh, downstream natural gas value chain. So, um, next slide. Uh, more than the, the evaluation of the project, it actually provided initially now, and of course this will be finally determined in, in a possible passage of a law, uh, the third party access. We already espoused that. Uh, well, uh, for the US, uh, we have an applicant now, an existing applicant like Accelerate, uh, who is uh, really on the third party access. So we, we at the very start, we want this uh, in the principle of the natural gas uh, law. Uh, when probably it will be passed in the coming years. Now, in this uh, temporary uh, stopgap measure department circular, we have, next slide, we have designed uh, a permitting requirement. Uh, this just, uh, these permitting requirements uh, provided uh, an order on how, uh, first, uh, how the applicant will be able to proceed with the project development and second on, the, on our part how do we able to monitor the progress of the project and uh, well there are other things that the department of energy uh, assist uh, provided a regulation for to assist the industry for example the passage of executive order number 30 and ultimately it was, uh, it was actually overruled by the passage of the evos uh, law but uh, Mainly, this is really the, the requirements for the uh, evaluation and implementation of natural gas projects, regasification specifically in the Philippines. Now, the development plan, this is the origin matter for downstream natural gas. Next, next slide. Alternative supply of natural gas, decline of Malampaya gas production, uh, concession of many contract gas sales contract will expire in 2024. Uh, well, basically that's the timeline by which uh, the operator of Malampaya is confident enough to sell gas, right? So you could just imagine if there's no more confidence, then really the supply is not uh, any more reliable after 2024. So um, our USEC is uh, in depth in this uh, second slide second box. There's no existing indigenous gas as a replacement for Malampaya. Uh, it's been there for the longest time, <laughs> you said. And then there's a need, of course, to sustain the operation of the 3,400 megawatt gas-fired power plant. So we have no choice, in short, but to go for the LNG importation. Now, this, uh, this, this the next slide would show us the, the existing uh, progress of the uh, LNG terminal and the justification projects. We have this lead seed around um, 3 MTPA, um, soon to be commissioned in around March of next year. We have first gen around 5.26, uh, soon to be commissioned also around March of next year. We have Energy World uh, around 3 MTPA, uh, soon to be commissioned around March 2023. Um, they're really trying very hard to accomplish that, Sir Graham, so you're there. And of course the rest of the, the three project proponents, Luzon Energy Terminal, Shell Energy, and various are still on the notice to proceed. In other words, they are still on the permitting requirements. Whereas the first three are already con on the construction Phase. So there is soon to be commissioned later on after the, cons the completion of the construction. The rest of the three here are still on the permitting. So 
They're more or less on the indicative uh, timeline uh, as of yet. So we have now, uh, at that time, we have a, a regulatory framework, but uh, we need uh, a, a corresponding uh, support from the from the technical side, uh, as, uh, training, uh, including, of course, this uh, this uh, need for a development plan. So. We arranged with the uh, UP, Statistical Center Research Foundation, and at that time, we are lucky enough that uh, the US uh, Department of State was actually pushing for the Asia Edge program, uh, corresponding with the program of the Japan government, uh, a $10 billion budget was given to develop natural gas regulation capacity building for the uh, ASEAN region. Uh, so these two governments actually pushed for the LNG capacity building on the receiving end, meaning the, the user side. So we're lucky enough at that time, that was really the, the push of the two governments from Japan government for the training. I was able to, so would like to extend also our uh, thanks to the Japan government for extending your assistance in training our staff. Almost all of our staff was able to were able to train in Jomek. So, but U.S. actually funded the two projects uh, through the U.S. Department of State. So, because of this, it's it's like a, a perfect time at the time to uh, to push for this uh, project. And uh, well, UP was actually there to support us coming out from the EPDP. I think that's the project, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> They're just, it's really a, a, a perfect timing for us from the Natural Gas Division to have all these ingredients in proper places to come out with this, uh, this uh, project, Gas Policy Development Project. And we're thankful for that that they're all extended help to the Department of Energy. Now, what is this natural gas development plan? Uh, next slide. Uh, it provides, next slide. First, the main parts of this policy development plan for, for probably studies and future uh, research of interested parties. It provides an overview of the role of natural gas in the Philippine energy sector. Second, it provided the details of the natural gas demand and outlook. It focused on the existing legal framework. For the meantime, we have the PDNGR. And of course, discuss the ongoing project, poten potential areas for development and way forward plans for the sector. Now, within these two, four major aspects of the natural gas development plans and program discussions, you would see an annex to these uh, plans and programs are the specific studies uh, assisted with us by the, by the UP Statistical Center and Research Center, and first of which is the investor's guide. So uh, if you're an investor new to the Philippines, you get a copy of this, and at least you could study the investor's guide. Um, probably an investor would also be interested by looking beyond the power sector, because power sector is there. We have, uh, we have first gen, as mentioned earlier. Uh, we have Lindsay for the San Miguel, Ilihan projects, and beyond. We have EWC with their, with their own uh, own house uh, power project uh, plan, uh, 600 megawatt. Uh, but beyond that, you need to look at also, in anticipation of the future demand of natural gas, we need to provide investors with uh, an idea of uh, uh, probably the second layer of uh, anchor demand. Anchor demand would be power, probably the second would be ecosomes. So here is the two studies provided with us. Uh, first, the, the, the phase one covered Laguna, Batangas, Cavite, Cebu, Pampanga, Binguet, Bulacan, and Metro Manila. These are the ecosomes that I'm referring to that uh, the uh, uh, UP 
uh, research center uh, focused on. And then the second would be Calabarzon. Well, the second has uh, a regional for that. When we, re we realized that most of the projects were actually located in Batangas, we pinpointed now uh, Calabarzon to be the, uh, probably the epicenter of uh, natural gas supply for the next 10 to 15 years. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, there's going to be an interest yet at this point in time for Visayas and Mindanao, which has a peak demand of around 2,500 megawatts, so highly unlikely, right? But uh, it's increasing, probably 500 megawatts per year, but uh, not really enough to, to warrant uh, a particular uh, gas uh, LNG gasification. Probably a small scale project for for energy, uh, but really it's Calabarzon. So we anticipated that we went to the eco zones, studied the eco zones, and now there's a book for that. There's a research study for that, and the investors could get hold of this and read uh, the result of the study. Now, the of course the the third part. As mentioned earlier, is the proposed regulatory process. One problem is that while we're capacitating the investors' interest and information and data in studying the Philippine situation for natural gas, we realize that we also need to capacitate the government agencies in anticipating possible project proposals. Uh, and with that, uh, we know for a fact that uh, this is a nascent industry in the Philippines. We're not accustomed to this. We're not familiar with this industry. We need to capacitate the government agencies, the regulating agencies that will be accepting, be, be evaluating this uh, project proposal. So here we have uh, another study specific to the itemized technical, administrative, and regulatory recommendations for 11 agencies and two LGUs. So um, I'll discuss the phase three because this is not complete. We have this study. These are regulatory process proposals, but it has to be materialized into a, an actual regulation for these 11 agencies and two LGUs. So we also have one study, which is the power and non-power applications on natural gas. But while we have these uh, eco zones as the target areas, but inside those eco zones might be a discussion on what sort of applications of nat natural gas would be uh, applicable to this uh, anchor market aside from power. So we develop also a study, a specific study on analyzing what could be the use of natural gas beyond power. So we compare power and non power applications of natural natural gas. And there's study particular to that uh, aspect. And of course, in anticipation of the uh, upcoming uh, discussion on an agency, particular uh, discussion on individual agencies, we need to anticipate that the, the product of that agreement or that uh, review and finalization of the standards that may came out among the discussion with the different agencies will have to be finalized, will have to be formalized. And we, we the, the only way, the best way to formalize that is to promulgate them as a Philippine national standards. So with that, we uh, anticipated uh, um, an agreement with the DPI Bureau of Philippine Standards to set up in advance a technical committee, which is a prerequisite to uh, discussing, reviewing, and later on promulgating Philippine national standards. So it's already there. The technical committee is waiting for the output of the of the discussion of the individual agencies of what, as to what the standards would be acceptable and that technical committee will be ready to deliver it once they're finalized to promulgate them as Philippine national standards. So everything we're actually anticipated in preparation for the for these challenges. So it appears that uh, we've covered enough, but it's not true. We still have way forward. Uh, approval of the law that remains to be the 
the ultimate uh, uh, regulatory framework rather than just a department circular. We have to develop the Philippine national standards, as I mentioned, and promulgate them as Philippine national standards. We have to have a specific regulation. As I said earlier, uh, we have now the study, but it has to be materialized into a specific regulation per agency. Uh, without that specific regulation, the study will just you know, remain as a library source and will not be utilized in the actual regulation of the natural gas industry. So again, another challenge would be to extend probably the natural gas market study of Visayas and Mindanao. I've mentioned probably, I'm, I'm really, um, uh, well, it's an opinion at this point in time, but I'm looking at Visayas and Mindanao to be on an LNG, small-scale small LNG uh, market. Um, again, uh, that, that's why there's a, a need for it, an economic feasibility with small-scale LNG carriers for enter island supply directed towards Visayas and Mindanao. So, um, all in all, this way forward would be on pace, unfortunately. So, um, we are really interested in proposing an additional project funding on these things. Otherwise, the preparatory studies in phase two will just be considered a library material, <laughs> library materials. So I think that's, uh, that's my presentation for the Inter-Natural Development Fund. Thank you.